Hi, welcome. Well, thank you for allowing me to come into your homes today. What I'm going to talk about is repent. But first, I'm going to give you the meaning of repent. To feel regret for sins or crimes. To feel remorse. Be contrite to feel sorry for past conduct. Repent to one's injustice to another. We have been cursed, and the reason is because of what Adam and Eve did in the beginning. I'm going to start off in Genesis 3, but I'm not going to read the whole chapter. <clears throat> Excuse me. Actually, I'm going to start in 3 6. This is after the woman, uh, I should say, was conned in to eating the forbidden fruit that God told her not to eat by the devil. The devil conned her. Six, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delight to her eyes and that the tree was desirable to make one wise, she took from its fruit and ate and she gave also to her husband and he ate. We'll hop down to 16. Again, if you want to read the fall of mankind, it's in chapter 3 of Genesis. 16, he says, to the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply your pain and childbirth. In pain, you shall bring forth children, yet your desire will be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Then to Adam, he said, because you have listened to the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree, which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat from it, Cursed is the ground because of your because of you in toil you shall eat of it. Toil means hard work, labor, all the days of your life. So God cursed Adam and Eve for what they did by eating the forbidden fruit. He cursed man and woman. And that holds true to today. And eventually, if you receive Christ into your life and accept Jesus again as your Lord and Savior, and you're born again, that sin is washed away. Because when, when Adam, what Adam and Eve did, that sin is carried on. Through generation, through generation, through generation. And when you cut off that by accepting Christ into your life, and he forgives you for what, down the line, then you're okay. And that's what you need to do. But I'm not going to talk about that now. Let's just... Keep going here. <clears throat> Let's go to Romans 5. That's basically what it'll explain to you. <clears throat> Let's go to Romans 5. Romans 5, 12. Therefore, just as through one man sin entered into the world, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men, because of all sin. Again, it starts from what Adam and Eve did. I'm going to read it again. Therefore, just as through one man, sin, entered into the world, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men, because all have sinned. So we all have sinned. Again, your mother gives birth to you, you are automatically born into sin, because of what Adam and Eve did. And the only way you're going to cleanse yourself of all that is when you ask Christ into your life and ask him to forgive you for your sins. We'll talk about that later on towards the end. Okay. Uh, Romans 6.23. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Hallelujah. The free gift... That gift is free to anyone that wants to accept Christ into his life. So the key is, if you know that something's wrong in your life and you were never repented and asked God to forgive you, then you're still living in sin. You're still living in sin. So when your body dies off, you're going to be with the devil. That's what the Bible teaches us. Remember that. It's so important. So you have to repent. Let's keep reading. I'm going to hop around a little bit. Let's go into Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Ezekiel 18. I'm 
I'm going to start in 26. He says, When a righteous man turns away from his righteousness, commits iniquity, and dies because of it, his iniquity which he has committed will die. Again, when a wicked man turns away from his wickedness, which he has committed and practices justice and righteousness, he will save his life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Because he considered and turned away from all his transgressions, which he has committed, he shall surely live. He shall surely not die. But the house of Israel says, the way of the Lord is not right. Are my ways not right? O house of Israel, isn't that your ways that are not right? Isn't that your ways that are not right? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, according to to his conduct. To each according to his conduct. Each one is going to be judged, declares the Lord the God. Repent, turn away from all your transgressions, so that iniquity may not become a stumbling block to you. Your iniquity is becoming a stumbling block. What are your stumbling blocks? Sin. So if you see and you're married and you see a woman and you constantly look at her here with, with your motives, with wrong motives, and you're married, that's a, bad, that's a bad motive in your life. That's sin. That's a stumbling block. Okay. Same thing with a woman looking at a male. The object is that if you have stumbling blocks, you should know what stumbling blocks are before you. Huh. You're driving along and you're speeding. That's the stumbling block. The speed limit says 25, 35 miles an hour, and you're doing 60 and 70. You're committing sin according to the law of the land and also according to God because God says, obey the laws of the land. That's what he tells us to do. So be careful what some uh, stumbling blocks are. You got to, we have stumbling blocks in front of us all day long, and we got to be careful we don't stumble over them. Okay. Let's go to uh, 30. Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, according to each conduct, declares the Lord God. Repent, turn away from your transgressions, so that your iniquity may not become a stumbling block to you. Cast away from all your transgressions, which you have committed, and make yourselves a new heart and a new spirit. This is before Jesus went to be with God. For when I will die, for why will you die, O house of Israel? For I have no pleasure. God has no pleasure in death of anyone who dies. For I have, this is what the Lord is saying, I have no pleasure in death of anyone who dies, declares the Lord God. Therefore, Repent and live. He has no pleasure in anyone that dies. Let's go to Mark. I'm sorry, let's go to uh, Acts. The book of Acts. Acts 17. Acts 17.30 Therefore, having overlooked the times of ignorance, God is now declaring to all men everywhere should repent. I'm going to read that. I want to kind of explain that. Therefore, living, therefore, having overlooked the times of ignorance, which we all were ignorant at one time or another, and the ones that aren't saved today are still ignorant, God is now declaring to all men that all everywhere should repent because he has fixed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness through a man he has appointed, having furnished proof to all men by raising him from the dead, and his name is Jesus. Amen. Amen. Mark, Mark 1. Let's go over to Mark. Mark 1. 
starting in the beginning. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in Isaiah the prophet. Behold, I send my messenger before your face. He who will prepare your way, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, make ready the way of the Lord, make his path straight. It's John the Baptist. <clears throat> John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching the baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea was going out to him and all the people of Jerusalem and they were being baptized by him in the Jordan River, confessing their sins. <clears throat> Again, this is before that Jesus came, and he came very shortly after this. Uh, well, look at number eight. He says, I baptize you with water. This is John speaking. But he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. He's talking about when Jesus comes, he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. If you read on, Jesus did come and uh, John baptized him. <clears throat> okay, Mark 6. Six seven. Mark 6, 7. And he summoned the twelve and began to send them out in pairs. He was giving them authority over the unclean spirits. And he instructed them that they should take nothing for their journey except a mere staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their, in their belt, money belt. But to wear sandals, and he added, do not put on two tunics. And he said to them, Whatever you, whatever, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave town. And any place that does not receive you or listen to you as you go out from there, shake the dust off your feet or off your soles as a testimony against them. And they went out and preached that the men should repent. And they were casting out many demons and anointing with oil, many of sick people and healing them. Now, when I went out to New York in 205 to preach the gospel, and the same thing, I do this all day, you know, when I'm out in the street. If I'm out in the street, I'm preaching the word of God to the people. And I'm asking them to commit uh, to God and ask them to forgive their sins. Um, so I'm doing this on a daily basis when I'm out in the street. I'm not out in the street every day anymore. But I'm out there sometimes uh, during the week or maybe a couple of times during the month. So I'm preaching the baptism and I'm preaching repentance. And I pray with the people that are out there in the street. And this particular uh, incident on uh, Mark 6 that we just read, <clears throat> this is what I did. I went out to New York and Manhattan, lived on the streets for uh, 30 days. Uh, I took, I'm sorry, I took a peanut butter and a jelly sandwich, and I ate in the, in the missions out there, and I worked the streets during the daytime. I worked the missions at night when I was staying there. And I preached the gospel, and I had them coming to me. At night, even though I was laying in bed, they would come over to me and wake me up and ask me to pray for them, ask me to pray for their families, and this is what I would do. It's kind of similar to what uh, Mark is talking about in chapter 6. Also, I remember very clearly the day I repented and asked Jesus into my life. I remember the month. I don't remember the exact day because it was almost 30 years ago. I wrote the, the month down in my Bible, <clears throat> and it was June. It was a hot summer day, and I remember reading this track, and I asked God to forgive me of my sins, not really knowing what I was doing at the time, but I knew something happened to me after I asked God to forgive me. Something just felt sucked out of me. Now, that doesn't happen to everybody that I know of, <clears throat> but it happened to me, and it was kind of dramatic. Again, I was kind of confused and lost 
I didn't know what was going on. Because I never really heard the salvation message. Now, I might have had heard it in the past, but my ears were blocked. But I don't remember. So, when I was out there and uh, just preaching the word to the people, and uh, they'd kind of come to me at night, uh, and I would pray for them at souls. Also, I also pray in the morning, uh, when I, when I, before I leave, I read my Bible in prayer time, and I, and I ask God to forgive me of my sins, my thoughts, and my mind, uh, and to give me guidance for the day. So I repent almost every day, if not every day, uh, for something I've done uh, that I remember I've done the day before, or at night before I go to bed, I remember I did something wrong, or at the time I'm doing something wrong, uh, I repent, and I ask God to forgive me. It's very important that you recognize when you are sinning. <clears throat> well, let me just say the situation of the world today. But let me read what I have written here. It says, <clears throat> We have allowed sin to control the church and the world. We are bombarded with evil every day and our fleshly desires imitate what's on TV, internet, video games, and in the movies. We are promoting illicit sex, greed, murder, filthy language, and abortion. We have ministers that are homosexuals running the churches and many stealing money and expenses and salaries. We have strayed from the truth. We are promoting sin to the highest levels and have become an ungodly, an ungodly nation. That's where we are today. If you really look at the television, read the paper, listen to the radio, you're going to see, hear people talk about sin being uh, married, gay people being married, uh, homosexuals, lesbians. Uh, that's sin, according to God's word. And we are promoting that in the church because we have, again, ministers uh, that are gay and promoting that it's okay to be gay and also to be a, a leader in the church. They think they're leading, but according to God's word, they are absolutely wrong, and they are being driven by the devil, and they're living in sin, and God does not commission that at all. He does not recognize that at all. And also, the thefts that are going on uh, from ministers and, and deacons and parishioners that are in these churches that are stealing, spending money foolishly, buying things they really don't need, okay, and they're just not being good stewards of the money of the church. And that's where I'm coming from, and that's what God wants me to preach to the people, and that's what I'm doing. 1 John, let's go to 1 John. <clears throat> 1 John. One John, three. Everyone who practice one John three four. Sorry, everyone who practices sin also practices lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. And you know that he appeared in order to take away our sins, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has seen him or knows him. Little children, let not one deceive you. The one who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. And the one who practices sin is of the devil. I'm going to read that again. The one that, who practices sin is of the devil. So if you're practicing sin and you're not born again and have not been cleansed by, by God's Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, you are working for the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. The Son of God appeared for this purpose that he might destroy the works of the devil. Or Let's go to number nine. No one who is born of God practices sin because his seed abides in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. This is number 10. By this, the children of God and the children of the devil are obvious. It's just obvious. 
Anyone who does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor the one who does not love his brother. So, <clears throat> if, you're, if you're living in the world and you don't have God in your life, you're of the devil. That's what the Bible is teaching me. Now, there might be people out there that might be offended, but I, this Bible has been around for thousands of years and it speaks the truth. The world has changed. The church is changing. We are following the, the ways of the devil and we're in trouble. We're in big trouble. We need to change our ways. We need to repent. We need to ask God to come into our lives and save our country and save our lives and save the world. Because Jesus gave his son to the world, not only to the United States of America. God gave his son to the world. Remember that. That's so important. God is light. Let's go to one. One John. One John. We're going to start in five. God is light. And this is the message we have heard from him and announced to you. That God is light and in him there is no darkness. There's no darkness in, in, in God. There's no darkness. God is light. You know, I can't, when I go into a room and, and, the, and during the daytime and the blinds are closed or the curtains are closed, I, ha- I can't stay in there. I got to open up, up the, open up the windows. I got to see the light. Because that when you're in that at night, it's fine. I, I know I got to go to sleep. My body's got to rest. But when you're out there and you're in somebody's apartment building, I go to sometimes I go to this person's house, and I, and I and it's a relative of mine. I got to go in there and open up the curtains because they're living in darkness. And I hope and pray that these people are, get saved because I've been praying them for them for years. Okay, but I got to open up the curtains. It's hard. It's hard for me to be in a dark room. That might sound like foolishness to you, but it's not foolishness to me. <clears throat> okay. But if we walk in the light as he himself is the light, this is seven, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. He died on the cross. He sacrificed. His blood cleansed us from all sin. I don't know how any plainer the Bible can make this. If we say that we have no sin... We are deceiving ourselves and the truth is not in us. And the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and righteous to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. We know when we make a mistake. We know when we do something wrong. We might talk harsh to somebody. We might cheat the government, okay? Or we might cheat a person out of money. Or we might cheat a person from an item or merchandise. You'll know. If you're, if you're a Christian and you're born again and you have God's spirit and God's the light, you're going to see right away you made a mistake. So you've got to ask God to forgive you. You need to repent. The world needs to repent. Boy, what a world it would be if everybody repented and followed the word of God. We wouldn't be in a situation. Jesus is the only answer to his problems in the world and in our country. He's the only answer to the government. We don't need more laws and rules and regulations. We got enough here. If we were all following these rules and regulations, we wouldn't have government officials and church church officials committing sin. We need to follow the word. We need to follow and do what Jesus tells us to do. Jesus is the light. Score with Ephesians. Ephesians. Two, Ephesians two. And you were dead to your transgressions, or I should say trespasses and sins. You were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world. Again, the world which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, 
according to the prince of the power of the air, the devil controls this, this earth of the spirit that is now working the sons of disobedience. We were all sons. We were all controlled by the devil. Among them, we too all formerly lived in the lusts of our flesh, indulging in the desires of the flesh and of the mind, where by nature children of wrath even add as they rest. But, but God, being rich in mercy because of his great love, which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ. By, by grace, you have been saved. Hallelujah. By grace, you have been saved. I mean, it's very simple. If you understand what the Bible is trying to teach us, it started from Adam and Eve. You've got to start from the beginning. We have to be saved. We have to ask God to, to forgive us. We have to repent. We need to go to Jesus. If you want to go to a friend, it's okay to go to a friend and repent. It's entirely up to you. It's entirely up to you. I got I to gotta leave uh, shortly. Uh, my time is up. I had a few more things to say. Go over to Psalms if you want. Go to Psalms 32. Read 1 to 5. Forgiveness of sins. I don't think I'm going to have the time to do that. <clears throat> but when I was born again and I asked Christ into my life, my whole life changed. That was in uh, June 1983. I remember exactly where I was. Burden just lifted off of me. Ending in prayer. Anyone out there wants a change of life, feel that they want to repent and ask God to come in and change their lives and to be with the Lord when your body dies off, spirit and soul. Just pray this prayer with me. Change your life. Change mine. Just say, Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord, forgive me of my sins because I know I've been a sinner. Lord, come into my life and save me and give me wisdom and guidance. Lead me in the way of righteousness and honesty, cleansing me again, Lord, of all my sin. Thank you, Lord, for your salvation and my salvation through Jesus. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. God bless you and have a safe day.